All right, so welcome back to another episode of How to Algebra. In this video, I'm going to show you how to factor polynomials, meaning we're going to have equations that look very close to quadratic equations, except the variable will have exponents greater than two. So hopefully you get something out of it. Subscribe, like, comment as always, and let's get it. Okay, factoring polynomials completely. Uh, step one, you always want to factor out the greatest common factor, right? GCF, you'll hear me say that a lot, GCF. And you always want to think of the GCF in terms of the coefficient, right? The numbers that are in front of the variables and the variables. Um, you can do them both at the same time um, if you're nice, right? But if you're not as nice, then there's nothing wrong with doing them individually, right? Taking out the number first and then taking out the greatest common number and then the greatest common variable and ultimately taking out the GCF. But you always want to do that first. That's the first starting point, so to speak. And then from there, you can see if you can factor it in other ways. Um, all right, number two, uh, factor according to the number of terms, right? So whether you have two terms, a binomial, uh, three terms, a trinomial, or four or more terms, um, with the two terms, the binomials, right? There's typically going to be three scenarios that you're going to find yourself in. Um, a difference of two squares. So that's, that's going to look something like this. A squared minus B squared, right? You have two terms, A and B squared, and it's a difference of the two. So one is being subtracted from the other. So when you have this, this is ideal because when you recognize it, there is a nice formula, A minus B times A plus B. So when you recognize the difference of two squares, you can always factor it like so. Uh, there's a difference of two cubes, which we'll get into in a second, and a sum of two cubes. Uh, three terms, so if there's three terms of trinomial, then a perfect square trinomial is a trinomial that factors into, into a binomial that is squared. So let me give you an example. So for instance, x squared minus 4x plus 4. This is a perfect square trinomial, mainly because when you factor it, so two numbers that multiply to make 4, that add up to negative 4, this is going to be x minus 2 and x minus 2. Right, because negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. And this is going to be x minus 2 squared. So this would be a perfect square trinomial. Uh, in general, like a, a, a general trinomial, just any other trinomial, uh, you want to look for what we call quadratic form, which I'll show you that in a second. It's going to be um, the power greater than 2. and it's going to solve the same way a quadratic would be solved or factored rather. And if you have four more terms, you're going to do what we call factor by grouping, group together the terms in a very specific way. Then you factor out the greatest common factor and it, it works every time. It works every time. If it can be factored, it'll work every time. All right. And last you look to see if it can be factored any further, right? Just because it factors once you could probably factor it again. Um, again, looking out for either a difference of squares or a difference of cubes or a sum of two cubes. All right, so that's really all the notes. Let's get into some examples. All right, so a sum of two cubes. Um, first, you have to identify that it is a sum of two cubes. So you got to be on the lookout for so sum, right, plus sign. And then two cubes. So we have a cubed and another cubed. So those are our, those are our indicators, right? And the formula is going to look like so. A plus, let's do it like this. Actually, all right, so A plus B, A squared, 
All right, so if you notice, I have left out the um, operation symbols, and that's because what I want you to commit to memory, right, the pattern, right, is plus, minus, plus. Plus, minus, plus for a sum of two cubes. So A plus B times A squared minus AB plus B squared. So plus, minus, plus, right? Plus, minus, plus. And then just the shape. AB, right? A plus B. And then A squared, AB, B squared. So if you can identify what A and B are, then we have the nice formula that we can just plug our values into. So let's look at the first example. 8x cubed plus 27. All right, so this is definitely a sum of cubes, right? So we have a sum for sure. So sum. 8x cubed. Um, 8 is really 2 cubed. Uh, knowing the cubes, right? Like 8 is 2 cubed. 64 is 4 cubed. All right, knowing these cubes really makes these problems that much easier. Uh, 27 is 3 cubed. So the idea here is that we can sort of factor out this cube that's on the 2 and the x. Okay, so it should be obvious that 2x is our a and 3 is our b. So wherever there's an a, we're going to put 2x. Wherever there's a b, we're going to put 3. So this is going to be so 2x, 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 b, or not b, 3, 3, Okay, you'll probably be a lot faster at that. I was just, for emphasis, I'm spreading it all out, right? So you can see it. So what's going to happen is that wherever there's an A, you're putting your A, right? So in our case, A was 2X. B was 3. So when you simplify all this out, you're going to get, 2x plus 3, 2 squared, right, is 4, x squared, minus 2 times 3, which is 6x, plus 3 squared, which is 9. And you always ask yourself, can this be simplified further? In this particular case, it cannot. So that's it. All right, a difference of two cubes, very similar. The only difference is that the operation pattern instead of plus minus plus we have minus plus plus so the exact same setup right the exact same setup except the operation symbols are going to be different so this is going to be a minus b a squared plus a b plus b squared so again just like the last problem except the operation symbols are different so as mentioned 64 is really 4 cubed, x cubed, minus 1 cubed. <clears throat> um, the cube can be brought out. So 4x, all cubed, minus 1 cubed. So here, a is going to be 4x. b is going to be 1. So plugging this in, we're going to get 4x. 1, I guess 4 squared would be 16, x squared, 4x times 1, that's nice, and then 1 squared is 1. So our operations are going to be minus plus plus, right? So minus plus plus. You don't have to... Delay on writing the symbols. Do you write the symbols as you go? I just, this is how I do it. So, all right. So, x cubed 
plus 64. Um, there's no GCF. However, 64 can be rewritten as four cubed. And this is a sum of cubes, sum of cubes, right? This is plus sum. And then it should be obvious that a is equal to X and B is going to be equal to four. So a sum of cubes, the pattern is going to be plus minus plus. So a plus B, a minus a B plus B squared. So the a is squared T. Okay. We're just plugging in, plugging in the formula. So this is going to be X plus four x squared minus 4x plus 16 because 4 squared and we see if this can be factored anymore um two numbers that make multiply to make 16 and add up to 4 yeah it's not possible at least not with whole nice numbers this won't this won't factor out at all so that one's pretty much done uh 16 Z5 minus 250Z squared. This does have a GCF. Uh, two can come out because they're both even, right? They're both even. So if I pull out a two, and then the Zs, right? The most I can take out of each, this has five Zs, this has two Zs, so I can pull out a Z squared. Again, I strike my Zs because my Zs and my twos look alike. So this is going to be eight Z cubed minus 125 and anything going to 8 and 125 no one's odd one's even okay however this can be simplified or factored even more because 2 8 is really 2 cubed and 125 is 5 cubed so this is going to be a difference of cubes here this is going to be 2z all cubed minus 5 cubed so a is going to be 2z b is going to be 5 so we have so the most forgotten about part is the gcf originally so we can't forget about this guy so this is going to be 2z squared and then a difference of squares. So minus plus plus again, using the same formula, just rearranging the plus and minus sign. So this is going to be two Z minus five and then two Z squared. So four Z squared plus a times B, so 10Z plus B squared, which is 25. Okay. And again, that's it. It's done. Okay. Factor by grouping. This is the most common type of factoring that you're going to use. It's very useful um, when you have four terms. Four or more terms. Typically, we'll see four terms. Um, you might see more than that, you know, later on. But when you have four terms, the idea is that we split it down the middle in front of whatever symbol is on the third term, right? You wouldn't split it here, right? That's not correct. All right. The GCF for the first two terms is going to be X squared. That's the most I can take out. And then left behind, we have X minus three. So we check ourselves quickly. We say, okay, X squared times X is X cubed. X times X squared minus three or X squared times negative three is going to be negative three X squared. So we're good. All right, because this is negative, we're going to factor out a negative. So factor out a negative. If that's negative, typically you factor out a negative. So 
So here the GCF for negative 16x and 48 are going to be negative 16. And then left behind. So we know it needs to be x minus 3. But we can't just write x minus 3 without checking it, right? You have to be able to check it because if it doesn't work out, then it's not factorable. But in this case, if we distribute, it does work out, right? Negative 16x and then negative, negative is positive, 48. So we're good. All right, the next step is that the parts that are inside the parentheses, that's one of our factors, x minus 3. The parts that are outside, the x squared and the negative 16, that's a factor. So we group those together, right? So this is going to be x squared minus 16. And then we ask ourselves, okay, can we go any further? And actually, yeah, we can because x squared minus 16 is actually a difference of squares. So 16 is actually 4 squared. Which means, right, if x is a and b is 4, this is going to be x minus 4 x plus 4 and we can't forget about the x minus 3 right because that's that's still a factor at the end of the day and this is it all right next example x cubed plus 7x squared minus 9x minus 63 again i'm going to split this down the middle in front of the symbol or the operation rather GCF for the first two terms, x squared, and left behind is going to be x plus 7. Right? And we check ourselves. x squared times x, x cubed, x squared times 7 is 7x squared. Right-hand side, this is negative. So we're going to factor out a negative symbol. So negative, here's going to be 9. left behind is going to be x plus 7. Right, and we check ourselves. Is, is, is this true? Uh, negative 9x, negative 63. Yeah, it is. Okay, x plus 7, x plus 7, they match. So that's one of our factors, x plus 7. And then the outside parts get grouped together as well, x squared minus 9. And oh, look, x squared minus 9, difference of squares. That's really 3 squared. So the factors are going to be x plus 7, x minus 3, x plus 3. Okay. Um, after some technical difficulties, let's uh, factor this completely. Uh, we have 16x to the 4th minus 81. There's no GCF, right? Nothing goes into 16 and 81 simultaneously, equally. However, 16 can be written as 2 to the 4th power. x to the 4th power minus 3 to the 4th power. All right, so the way to solve this guy, it, it almost looks like a difference of squares. Right, like it, it's it's so close. The only difference is that it's a power of four, not a power of two. So we're going to first off, I can bring out the four. And if those were twos, life would be nice. Like it would be nice if those were twos. So let's kind of like force that idea, this um difference of squares idea. So Exponent properties say that if I have a power raised to a power, I can multiply them. So four is actually two times two. So I'm going to use that fact. All right, I'm going to raise the power to a power in both of these. So this is going to be if I apply the power to the coefficient and the x, I'm going to get 
four x squared, and that's squared, minus three squared, which is nine squared. So here, this is a difference of squares, right? It should be obvious that four x squared is a, and then nine is b. So a squared minus b squared equals a minus b, a plus b. So we just fill in what we know, right? So this is gonna be four x squared minus nine, four x squared plus nine. Okay, the four x squared minus nine is actually a difference of squares again. The four x squared plus nine is not like that. This part right here is done. Uh, there's nothing else we can do. Uh, but this first part, four is really two squared. So we can factor out the square in a sense, and this would be three squared. So we're gonna get, again, this is A and this is B, and we're gonna just apply the same idea. 2x minus three, 2x plus three, and then 4x squared plus nine. These are the, the factors of 16x to the fourth minus 81. So you wanna use the difference of squares idea here. Okay, um, first thing I see that jumps out at me is that they're all even. Like I can bring out a two. I can bring out P squared. That's, you know, two P's. That's the most that we can take out from each of these. So this is gonna be P to the sixth plus five P cubed plus six. Okay, let's factor this second part. So let's consider um, if we had x squared plus five x plus six, All right? Let's just consider this for a moment. This is definitely factorable, right? Because two numbers that make six that add up to five are two and three positive, both positive, and it would be X, right? Because if you think about how FOIL works, distributing, X times X would be X squared. So this is the idea that we're gonna use right now. So this is definitely factorable. And we're gonna factor it just like we, we did here to the left. So two numbers that multiply to make six that add up to five are two and three, both positive. However, the variable is obviously going to be p, but p to the what? That's the question. So think about when you're distributing this back out. p times p needs to be p to the sixth, and we need to add the exponent. So this is going to be p cubed. And this is it. This is the most it could be. So 2p squared p cubed plus two, p cubed plus three. Okay, uh, these original problems are called quadratic forms, uh, and that's basically because they factor just the way a quadratic would. All right, so these next couple of examples, this is where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. Um, the whole purpose of factoring polynomials is so we can eventually solve the polynomials for x, right? Remember, think about what it means to solve a quadratic, right? You're solving to find out where the graph crosses the x value or the x axis, the value of x when it crosses the x axis. So that's essentially what we're leaning towards. So here, given this situation, we have an equal sign. So step one would be to move all the x variables to one side. So I'm going to subtract 60 X cubed from both sides. We're going to rewrite this in descending order. So left hand side, we have four X to the fifth plus actually minus 
60 x cubed plus 216x equals zero. Okay, GCF time. Uh, what jumps out at me is that everything's divisible by four, right? Even 216. The last two digits are divisible by four, so that means 216 is divisible by four. So I'm going to take out a four, and then I'm going to take out an x, because each of these have an x. So left behind, we're going to have x to the fourth minus 15x squared plus 54. All equals zero. Okay. The part inside the parentheses, if we treat it like a quadratic, right? Two numbers that multiply to make 54 that add up to negative 15. This would be six and nine. But 15 is negative, so both have to be negative. So this means negative 6, negative 9. And then the x's, so we look at this leading term here. So it's x to the fourth. So we need x squared to show up, or the x's to be squared, rather. Okay, these are all equal to 0. So 4x is equal to 0 x squared minus 6 is equal to 0. x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. The first one's easy. Uh, x is equal to 0, right? 4 times 0 is 0. If we add 6 to both sides, we're going to get x squared is equal to 6. we got to take a square root. And anytime we introduce a square root, we have to bring a plus or minus. So plus or minus root 6. You can't rationalize 6 anymore, simplify 6 anymore, root 6 anymore. Uh, here we're going to add 9. x squared is equal to 9. So the square root of both sides, x is equal, plus or minus 3. So we have our five solutions, right? 0, positive root 6, negative root 6, uh, positive 3. Negative three. Okay, last example. I'm going to bring add 36 to both sides. 36x. So we get 4x to the fifth minus 40x cubed plus 36x is equal to zero. Uh, the first thing that jumps out at me is that everything's divisible by four. So that's not going to always be the case. It's just in these examples, it is. So four, and I can bring out a single X from everything. So left behind, we're going to get X to the fourth minus 10 X squared plus nine is equal to zero. Again, we're going to factor the parentheses part as if it was a quadratic, right? As if this was X squared minus 10 X plus nine, um, two numbers that multiply to make nine that add up to 10. So this is gonna be nine and one for sure, right? Nine times one is nine. And then nine plus one in a sense make 10 if they're both negative. So this satisfies it. And the X's, well, we look at this is X to the fourth. So we know X squared needs to show up. And these are all equal to zero. So, 4x is equal to 0. x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. x squared minus 1 is equal to 0. The first one's easy. Again, x is equal to 0. x squared minus 9, we just solved this. So I'm going to use that. x is equal to plus or minus 3. And if I add 1 to both sides, this is going to be x squared is equal to 1. So x is equal to plus or minus 1. Okay, um, hopefully this helped someone out. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. Um, like and comment. I enjoy reading the comments, so like and comment. Um, show your support. I really appreciate it. Catch you next video.